Contact tracing is considered a critical tool right now in the fight to contain the virus. Yeah, but what is it really like to do the work? Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with a story of a local contact tracer and a word of warning everyone needs to hear, Doc. Yeah, Kim and Devin, while medical staff are working to save lives from COVID-19, it's the contact tracers who can actually stop the spread. It's a job where they know how much the community is relying on them. The majority of my day is on the phone. Until March, Dana Benoit worked as a community health analyst at the Washtenaw County Health Department. When she was reassigned to be a contact tracer, she expected it to last about two weeks. Then the, the situation unraveled. Uh, clearly, that was not the case. And uh, here we are many months later still doing that same work. While testing tells us where the virus is, contact tracing tells us where it's going next. We all feel like uh, we have to play the role of a detective to figure out, okay, who's connected with this? And this person also talked with this person. Dana spends her days trying to reach the close contacts of people who have tested positive, checking on their health and asking them to quarantine at home for 14 days. We do occasionally have people that are uh, a little bit grumpy when we call them because um, it's not a fun call to get. But most people appreciate their calls. It feels really gratifying, especially when you're able to talk with someone and they express to you, you know, I'm so glad you called. I was so worried. You answered my questions and I feel like I know what to do now. In addition to detectives, they're also part social worker. Situations can be complicated. And when they are repeatedly unable to reach close contacts, it's upsetting. Given the choice, people certainly don't want to put their friends and family who they care very much about, they don't want to put them at any additional risk. Um, so it, it is disheartening and also makes us nervous when people don't answer the phone. As people have started going out more, the places they're getting exposed have changed. Those uh, gatherings where there might be a bunch of friends or family together for a barbecue or some other, you know, party in someone's backyard or, or what have you, things like that. Right now, we're seeing that those situations are where most of our close contacts are coming from. The response she hears most often. You know, I, I thought twice about whether I should go to this um, this barbecue or, or whatever it was, um, but I ended up going because I thought, oh, this won't happen to me. Um, but, you know, here we are, lo and behold, um, now they need to quarantine. And Dana has not lost any of her assigned contacts, but her colleagues have. Hearing that they've gotten sick and that they're not doing okay, and then hearing that someone who you've been following and, and checking in on has unfortunately passed away, um, that's heartbreaking, and that's, that's really hard. While it's emotionally exhausting work, Dana will keep doing it as long as she's needed. We truly, truly care about the health and the well-being of the people that we're contacting. At the end of the day, I think we do have, feel like we're making a difference and that the work we're doing is really important. Now, Dana says the best thing you can do to help the situation is to take precautions like wearing a mask, washing your hands, and keeping your distance from others. And if you do get a call from a health department, please answer the phone. Back to you. That's important as well. Okay, it's really interesting how that all works. Doc, we appreciate it.